Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. More than ever. Did you like that song? Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. More than ever, folks, you and I need to be at the feet of Jesus. More than ever, our nation needs a message of hope. More than ever, the church needs to be brought up out of its deadness, out of its compromise. More than ever, the church needs to rise to the occasion at hand. Ezekiel 37. And we'll look at verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied there was a sound and behold a rattling and the bones came together bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are indeed cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from the graves. O my people, and I will bring you to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. Father, we gather this morning in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, acknowledging before you that we need you more than ever. Father, we look to you this morning as we live in the midst of the darkness that has swept across this country, that is taking lives and is bringing misery and heartache to many of his families will be grieving over lost loved ones. We look to you this morning, Lord as the church has compromised herself to death, as the gospel has been watered down by false teachers, as your word has been twisted by the false teachings and the false teachers today that are prevalent in many pulpits, we look to you, Lord, this morning. We're asking and praying that you would speak to dry bones across this nation. We're asking and praying that you would raise up a people in this day. We're asking and praying that the remnant of God would rise to the surface and shine in the midst of this great darkness that we're facing. We're asking, O oh God, that you'd have mercy upon us. We're asking, Lord, that you would pour out your grace upon us. 
We're asking, Father, that you would help us to humble ourselves, to turn from our evil ways. We're asking, and Lord, to hear from heaven and heal our land and heal your people. And we're asking in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to and for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. So we need to understand that the context of this passage that we just read is dealing with the nation of Israel. You have to keep in mind that's the context and Ezekiel here is addressing the restoration of a nation, specifically the nation of Israel. It would entail both a national as well as a spiritual restoration. We might even define it from the text as a resurrection of the nation. Here we don't see any <coughs> reference to the resurrection of the saints, which we certainly believe in. Here, God has spoken to the prophets speaking of the restoration of the nation of Israel. And so I want us to be certain this morning that we understand this context when we are viewing the Scripture. It's a literal prophecy about the nation of Israel and her future. Ezekiel is saying here that God will restore the land and He will regenerate His chosen people. When would that be? It will be a day, it will be a time when Jesus will return as the Messiah to claim what is His own. In that day, the dead nation of Israel would be or will be raised to life. A divided nation would once again be reunited. That's what the context is all about. And without taking this text and allegorizing it this morning, I do want to take it and, 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 and present to you here what may be a very valid principle or an application to the modern day church as well as to our nation which at this point in history, we can say is in deep, deep trouble. All of us are aware that much of our nation today has been literally shut down. The doors of many churches, the doors of most churches across the country this morning have been Shut down. You and I are blessed this morning that we have such a small group of people that we're able to meet here and still be within the guidelines that have been set forth by the government. Amen. The mega churches, they've been shut down. Listen, America has been shaken, folks, and it's not over yet. It's just beginning. That's the reality of it. America has been shaken. And listen, I believe that God is the maker and the shaker. Amen. Amen. It's rather odd, I would say to you this morning, that there are two particular businesses that remain open in the land today. And I believe that these two businesses have much to do with the judgment that has fallen upon this nation. You know the abortion clinics are still open. The abortion clinics are still in the killing business and they continue to perform their wickedness even as the judgment of God falls. Then, you know, the liquor stores remain open as well. 
I guess the liquor stores remain open in order to provide people with a means of coping with the devastation that we're being seen, we're seeing around the country. One preacher I liked the other day, I saw, he called it wicked liquor. Wicked liquor. That's probably quite appropriate. It is wicked. It has strong wickedness across this country. And if there's any two industries that need to be shut down in this country, it would be the wicked liquor business and the abortion industry. Amen. The world refuses to shut it down. Even as the judgment of God is falling. A national revival across the land probably would be the only thing that will ever shut down wicked liquor and the abortion clinics. That's what we need. After God's judgment is finished, what we need is a heavenly sent, God sent revival to restore, to reform both the nation and the church in America. False teachers in the church today are being heralded as great men of God while the true messengers of God are mocked and laughed at and ridiculed, maligned, and accused. You know, the world had a fit the other day when the president had the My Pillow fellow in one of his daily conferences, and he dared mention the Bible. He dared mention God. The world got angry. The media got angry. They're still going out. The world, this nation, and the church needs to start listening to what God is trying to say to us. The church, the church needs to get its act together and start hearing what thus said the Lord. The time for both the nation and the church to repent is upon us, folks. Forty years Forty years. I have been believing. I have been expecting. I have been praying for. I have been looking for another great spiritual awakening in America. Not just in this nation, but around the world. I don't know with certainty, folks, but I can tell you the question has been bouncing around in my head. Could God just very well be preparing us? Might what we're seeing today be a prelude? Might there be a silver lining in the cloud, folks? Amen. Amen. You and I have hope. Why? Because we serve a risen Christ. Amen. My hope and my prayer is that in the midst of all that is happening here, God has something big prepared. And so this is what I want to get across to you this morning. If God can raise up dry bones, He can surely save this nation. If God can raise up dry bones. He can save our nation. Now, the first thing I want to see is this. Dry bones are an illustration of death. You ever been through the woods? Dennis Jr. probably can relate it. You been, or Dennis Sr. can relate it. You go out through the woods and you run across some bones. Well, you think about it. That used to be something that was living. That used to be a living creature. And then bones are evident of what? That that living creature lives no more. It's dead. You 
see death. And you know that the skeleton bone was once covered with the flesh of a living creature. In his vision, what does Ezekiel see here? Ezekiel sees a valley full of dry bones. When I read this, I remember the name of that television, television that Western series years ago, Death Valley. Remember that? That's essentially what Ezekiel saw in the valley. He saw a valley full of what? Death. That's what sin had done to the nation of Israel. It had brought death. The psalmist said in Psalm 9 and 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Lord, help this nation if we move on out of this and forget God. Our nation, as you and I sit here this morning, our nation literally stands on the brink of economic collapse. Think about that. Our government leaders are, are playing a balancing game here between life and death. Between life and death of human beings, between the life and death of a nation's existence. And while all this is going on, where's the professing church? The professing church in America, for the most part, is spiritually bankrupt. Do you know America right now is monetarily bankrupt? I wonder if there's a parallel. The professing church across our land, for the most part today, the doors have been closed. While hospitals are filling up, masses of folk are sick, many are dying. America's economy all along teeters on the brink of collapse. Man is doing all that he can to resolve the problem, but man can't do it on his own. Man is doing all he can, but he can't do it. Listen, man needs God now, and he'll always need God. Amen. Don't believe for one second that God is not in the middle of what is happening in our nation. Listen, true men of God have been warning this nation for years. You can't slaughter millions of babies. You can't spin in the face of God without eventually facing a day of reckoning. No doubt, no doubt, no matter how far it goes, folks, you and I, America is facing a day of reckoning in the here and now. No doubt the nation is dead in sin. The professing church across the land is dead in doctrine and compromise. Those who have eyes to see it those who have ears to hear it can see it and hear it. I tell you, those who have spiritual discernment today can even smell a stench in the valley of death. Amen. God asked Ezekiel in this vision, He asked Ezekiel a question and He said, Can these bones live? Can these bones live? Let me ask you, did God know the answer to that question? Yes. He sure did. Can these bones live? You know what Ezekiel's reply was? Read it. Lord God, only you know. Will this nation see revival? Only God knows. 
Will the professing church throughout the land be reformed? Only God. Will God save America? Will God reform the church? Only He knows. And obviously, if God chooses to do so, He's the only one that can bring America back. He's the only one that can bring the true church back together. He's the only one that can raise a nation from the dead. Amen. Dry bones are an illustration of death. If God can raise up dry bones, God can save this nation. Secondly, I want us to see this. The Word of God can bring life out of the midst of death. The Word of God can bring life out of the midst of the death. Now understand, Ezekiel was a prophet. He was a prophet. And as a prophet... He represented, not only did he represent, but when God spoke to him, he spoke the word of God. When the prophet spoke, when Ezekiel spoke, man would do well to listen. God commands Ezekiel. He said to Ezekiel, Son of man, speak to those dry bones. Speak to them. Oh, you know what that tells us? The Word of God is quick and powerful. The Word of God is living. The Word of God is perfect. The Word of God not only has life, but has the capacity to impart life into man. And Ezekiel, you know what he did? He dared to believe God. Ezekiel dared to believe God. And what did he do? He spoke forth the Word of God as he was commanded. And what happened? Those dry bones came together and were covered with flesh. Oh, listen, a God that can do that is a God that can still save a nation. Brother. The bones came together. They were covered with flesh. But something was still missing. What was that something? It still lacked life. It still lacked life. You know what it needed? It needed God to breathe on it. Listen. God has called the church. God has called the preacher. God has called the pew. God has called the layman to proclaim, to preach the Word of God. That is man's only hope. It is our nation's only hope. Listen. The world doesn't know it. But the true church in America has the word of God that the world and the church so desperately needs today. Amen. A compromised, watered down message will never accomplish the mission that God has given to the church. Churchy entertainment. Storytelling. Church comedians in the pulpit. Listen, those things will never get God's mission accomplished. No, the church needs to get back to an uncompromised message, an unadulterated message. It's required if we're going to see true revival and true reformation, the professing church, the nation, I would suggest to you this morning, is full of dry bones. Dry bones. Too many false gospels have replaced the true Word of God. Too many false teachers have taken over pulpits. And I believe that God has shut down things with the purpose and a plan. The Word of God can bring life out of the midst of death. 
If God can raise up dry bones, God can save our nation. Amen. Last, I want to say to you this morning, understand that Ezekiel was commanded by God to prophesy to the wind. He was commanded to prophesy to the wind. We need the wind of God to breathe on the four corners of the earth today. Amen. Ezekiel was commanded by God to prophesy to the wind, and he was to say this, come to the four winds, O breath. Ezekiel did as he commanded. He spoke life, and life came entered into those bodies. Just like what happened in the beginning. Adam. Remember Adam was created. God made him of flesh and bone, but his body was still What did he need? He needed breath from God. Adam became a living soul when, when God breathed into his body. God is still able, folks, to breathe life into the dead, whether it be an individual, whether it be a church, whether it be a nation, God is able to spiritually raise us up. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say to you folks, that's our hope this morning. Dry bones. Oh, listen to this. Dry bones would suggest what? that all hope has been lost. Dry bones. But say to man, all hope has been lost. Listen, do you understand that you and I are living in a nation today that is increasingly becoming filled with people who are despairing of life? People are dying. Hospitals are filling up. Families are mourning over their dead loved ones. They can't even see them in the hospital. They can't even gather to bury them. Nation of despair. A nation full of folk who are being held captive by fear of what is upon us and what is surely coming. The nation is staggering like a drunkard this morning, reeling from the reality of what is happening. And I see folk, and I hear folk every day that are not even living in reality. They don't believe any of this is happening. Many, many in the world have placed their hope in man. Many in the church have placed their hope in false teachers. I saw one false teacher the other day holding his hand out like this and he was commanding in the name of Jesus for the virus to die. <laughs> and folk flocking after him sending him down. He's still raking it in. Our hope, the nation's hope, must be placed in the one true God. Listen, for many folks,
there is an increasing attitude today of hopelessness. But when we place our trust, when we place our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we find hope. Not only do we find hope, we find a place of refuge. God can save this nation. Christ provides us with hope. And God can revive and reform His church. If God can raise up dry bones, God can save our nation. In conclusion, I would say to you this morning, what the church needs, what our nation needs, is new life from God. Amen. <clears throat> How does life come? Life comes to the proclamation of the Word of God. Life comes from the proclamation of the Word of God and God's active agent, the Spirit of God, working here on earth, working through the hearts of His people, working through His true Charles Spurgeon said this, Decayed churches can most certainly be revived by the preaching of the Word, accompanied by the coming of the heavenly breath from the four winds. Many in our nation, many around the world, God's people, have been praying for years that revival would come to the world. Perhaps God will give the world another chance. Perhaps God has one final great spiritual awakening left that He might fill up heaven. he ends it all. Just perhaps. The call to the church, the call to the world, the call to our nation from God is very, very clear today, folks. Repent and turn to the God of heaven who is able to raise up these dry bones. Let me ask you, do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ this morning? Let me ask you this. As we face, face this dark moment in our history, have you found yourself drawing nearer to God? Amen. Have you found yourself opening up the Word of God and saying, that sounds like the day I'm living in. Have you found yourself on your knees crying out to God that He would move, that He would minister, that He would breathe the cross four winds of the earth. From the north, the south, the east, and the west. We ought to be praying that God would come forth with a mighty move of the Spirit of God and the Word of God in this day. Father, we close this morning in the name of Christ Jesus. We take the time to pray for this nation. Again, Lord, we lift up our president. We lift up our national leaders before you. 
We pray, Lord, for the counselors that surround our president, that you would give them that much-needed wisdom. We pray, Father, once again, that you would be merciful to us as a nation, that you would be gracious to us as a nation. We pray, Father, that you would raise up that true remnant of your people that are scattered across this nation, that we might be united. We pray, Lord, that we might see a great spiritual awakening in this nation. We pray, Father, that we might see a great shaking amongst your own people, that we would rise and that we would shine in the midst of the darkness that's come upon us. And we ask it in Christ's holy name. Amen. Amen. Amen.